Time is speeding up, chaos is shifting into a new level, and we feel the pull to unlock the mysteries of the universe. Timeless spiritual wisdom offers the point of stability to navigate these times and to open our greatest potential. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the fun and knowledge of visionary best-selling authors Sri and Kira as they explore these mysteries and invite your higher love to come forward. And now, here are Sri and Kira. Namaste and welcome to Explore the Mysteries. I am wisdom teacher Sri Ram Ka. And I am Master Lady Kira Ra and such an incredible moment on the planet. You know, here we are, we're coming into this month of February 2021. This is the moment, this is the month, this is the breath to free your heart and say yes to your ascended presence. And, you know, this is a moment where so much is happening. You know, it, especially right now in this early, early uh, February, which is just coming up in a day here as, as this show premieres, yeah. that we are getting momentum from the full moon. We're getting momentum from this incredible up-level period we're in and retrograde. the retrograde Mercury. <laughs> so imagine that all of these intersecting energies are meeting you. Oh, they are. You don't have to imagine it. They really are. And this is the moment where we are here because we have gone further than we have ever gone before. And so let's just throw that right out there at the top of the hour, right? Here you are in this amazing journey with us. We are exploring the mystery of this very moment of awakened consciousness. And in this moment of awakened consciousness, the mystery <coughs> is about how are we releasing our attachments? How are we moving into the gateway that lets us not only discover the truth of who we are, but allows us to keep that gateway open. And, and you know, for millennia, and I mean millennia, 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 on and on, you can go through any tradition you want, guides, teachers, gurus, whatever experience works for you, have always discussed the importance of releasing attachment. Mm -hmm. And today, we're going to be not only diving into what does that really mean, we're going to also be looking at the real life application of all of this. And what's so exciting is that all of this is springboarding from the lost books of the Essene. And I really just think we need to start by saying, what are the lost books of the Essene? Because Sri and I have been dancing with these books for many, many years. Absolutely. The, the, you know, and the Essene have a biblical reference and an earth reference. Uh, the uh, Essene were known at the uh, some 2,000 years ago as healers that lived in community and would go out and offer service uh, to people uh, at large in the greater communities. But they lived together as, almost as a family unit. And they were considered to be very very eccentric. They were considered to be very uh, mystical in the fact that they were not understood other than they were appreciated because of the integrity and the presence that they held. It is often, many believe that Jesus the Christ was in a scene, that that's where he actually received all of his training. And that is just a small, little sliver of of what Essene is. And many of the Essene ways are still here. For example, if you read any of the beautiful Essene Gospels of Peace, they all talk about vegetarianism. They talk about colonics. They talk about clean ways of living and eating and patterns of being and ways of holding your consciousness. And the benefits of living in a community of those that could support each other that would then go out and do their live their lives but they would always come back and find that moment and in many ways explore the mysteries is a gathering of the Essene every yeah. time we get together all of the shows Shri and I Shepherd Shri and Kira Live every Sunday at noon Pacific time Soul Mirrors every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific time this show premiering every Sunday at 9 p.m. East, uh, Eastern time this is an important experience, the experience of knowing that when you say yes to coming together in community, you are here because you're filling up. You are here because your unique mission has brought you to this moment. And that's how we begin to even understand the energetic blessing of the Essena. 
Mm. And so this is how it was brought in for us. Yeah. Let's walk them through the difference in that. Yeah, a very important discernment. Mm-hmm. So in, in terms of the literature here on earth, there uh, it's documented. There were the, a group of, of uh, healers and, and uh, mystical uh, teachers called the Essene. Mm-hmm. And that's a very worldly uh, word, meaning it's a word that was birthed of this density, mm-hmm. Essene. As we begin to connect with and bring through the pure messages from these stars, uh, star-born teachers, what was shared early on is the energy of who we are is more closely associated with Essena. Now, Close your eyes if it's safe to do so, and I want you to bring your hands to your heart. And first, Sri, let's let's we're gonna, we're just going to repeat the word that was used that that you're already familiar with. So just close your eyes, hand your heart. Let's first take in a breath. Let's take in a deep breath. So, now receive this word, Essene, and just breathe and notice. We're going to give that to you again. Just take a moment. Let's just clear see how it feels. Because I'm also I'm feeling a lot of the congestion in throat. So let's really feel that. Okay, we're going to do that one again. As seen. And just feel that. And just notice that. Now, we're going to take a conscious clearing breath. We're going to go up through the nose, out through the mouth, hand on heart. So after you exhale, I want you to really exhale. And then I want you to notice this next word. Let's go in. So. Essena. 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 Notice what you're noticing. You feel the expansion? This is that multidimensional expansion. This is when we, re- as simple as releasing our attachment to even the way we perceive words and energies, noticing that language truncates energy and mm-hmm. that as we expand, our language expands. That's why so many beings right now are calling in light language. That's why so many beings are feeling the energy of their souls reuniting with the truth of how they communicate. That's the blessing because when we call forward new language, when we expand how we communicate, we are up-leveling our mastery and the master is coming in with even greater presence. That's what Essena does. And the lost books of the Essene were a series of ensoulments, transmissions that came through Sri and I all over the world. They yes, happened yeah. to come through during a 12-month period when we were doing a we lot of international travel. Yeah. And so it was very interesting that they came in in very beautiful parts of the world. And that with that launched a an energy that had not been experienced since the burning of the Library of Alexandria. This was also part of what was freeing ascended numerology because the ancient magi are also Essena or Essene. Just the the word Magi or Essene does not say, I am different from you. I am as you are, Magi, Essene. And so Ascended Numerology was the forte or the healing art of the Magi, whereas the energy medicine is the healing art of the Essene. Yet they are both practicing that healing art. And when it was assured back when, when being on this planet was a gift because it was one where you absolutely came in knowing and aware the entire lifetime of your soul's mastery. And they would show up to the beings that had shepherded your birth and they would create the ascended, what we call ascended numerology, the scrolls of your life's journey. And your and remember, it's not just this life. That's where the limitation came in. When those scrolls <clears throat> were destroyed, when how to create those scrolls were destroyed, the mapping <clears throat> of the soul's journey was buried with it. Numerology got truncated down to nine digits instead <clears throat> of the glorious 13. And we became shielded. Yeah. And so the Essena ignites the Ave Saw expansion and insists us to first and foremost begin releasing attachment to that which we perceive. Because when we do that, we expand. Yeah. You know, and, and this one discernment of the name Essene or Essena no. carries with it a profound communication about flow, yes. about energy and spirit. And the Essena uh, gathered as a, as a brethren, as a community that would provide soul connection 
to the populace. And, yeah. and they, one of the things that they taught is that healing begins at the feet. All healing begins at the feet. And, and remember uh, from the Bible that the master Jesus would wash the feet. First thing. Of people. So this is a clue about his relationship with well, the community. And I, I have to jump in here because of the divine feminine. What did Mary Magdalene do when she first met Jesus? She washed his feet. She washed his feet. He was healed <clears throat> because of the divine feminine energy that came around him. And it's one of the few divine feminine references left that yeah. this is part of that rising divine feminine. So here you have the Essena really sharing that, you know, this is the divine moment of all healing begins at the feet. And then you have this divine feminine energy offering the healing of the feet yeah. to the one that is illuminating, who then becomes, let he who is without sin cast the first stone, the balance yeah. of the energy, right? Yeah, and that divine feminine energy is a receptive lifting. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. one of the things I want to point out is that uh, the ascension energy, the path of self-ascension, is a recognition that mm -hmm. energy rises up and flows around. That's the Taurus, Taurus. <laughs> energy. And, and this is quite different than the energy uh, of, of other traditions that suggest that you need to hook into the earth, the ground exactly. into the earth. That's the uh, density energy. And so the Essena talk uh, at times about walk in our shoes, in our sandals, because the golden sandals of the Essena yes. are not grounded in the earth. They're, they're walking very lightly. We are connected to the cosmos serving the earth exactly. rather than grounding into the earth wishing to lift. Well, and this is important to understand because we're, we want to read with you, read with you. Actually, that's kind of how it feels. We want to share with you a portion. When these books came through, the lost books of the Essene, there were 12 that came through and they are so profound. And Sri and I have been working on releasing this totality of work for so many years and we are so close yet we always keep getting stopped and we just have to keep honoring that. So tonight's experience is based out of book 10. Yes. And we want to read to you a piece of that book. And the reason we were sharing with you about how all feeling be, all healing begins at your feet is because they open up talking about your Essena shoes. Yes. And so breathe and be and, and let this enter you. Here's the direct language from the Essena. When you walk this planet without your Essena shoes, you walk seeking to be attached. <sighs> to be attached to your life experience. To be attached to an outcome. To be attached to one way or another. <coughs> To be attached to a point of view that may be so important that you are unable to move forward. And this is okay. What is it you are attached to? What is it you are truly part of? What attraction could there possibly be that would need to be called to you that is not already you? You must listen for a moment to your own heart. In your own heart and in your own soul and in your own energy field is everything you need. Everything you need. Everything you need. When the S.E. Na walked on your planet with great frequency and great regularity, many were afraid of S.C. Na. Many projected energies toward Essena out of the fear of a misunderstanding of what Essena is. When you walk in divine wholeness without needing to attach, without needing to call forth attraction, you walk and all is offered. All is given. All doors open. All windows are open. All abundance that you could ever try to call forward for you is available and oftentimes comes forward with such great waves of energy that you are indeed almost afraid of it. Great waves of energy. Great waves of energy. 
How much energy do you spend reading about how to attract, learning how to attract, out focusing on how to attract, paying attention to how you should attract, writing little sentences about how <laughs> you attract, uh, how you should attract, attract, and talking to others about <laughs> attracting, repeating your sentences. Now, come on, guys, I want you to really hear that because. This There is so much in this installment. There is just so much in here. And so we want to continue, take a breath, and then we're going to go really through all of this because here it is. When that energy, that sentencing energy, and what they're talking about there is your attachment to the law of attraction. When that energy is freed, freed from your energy field, all there is is the divine, perfection, abundant being that you are. Law of Instantaneous Manifestation. That is the heart of Essena, which is what we came to share with you today. The heart of Essena that carries with it no attachment. So let's breathe that in for a moment and let's really pay attention because there is so much to unpack today. And this is the moment at hand. It is that moment of not only is humanity facing a moment where it's the heart that's being challenged, right? Yeah. We are at a moment, and we have talked about this frequently, we are at a moment where it's the very heart of humanity that is being looked at right now, that is in front of all of us. And and I want to remind you all, if you have not yet been to www.global.com, yes, we finally launched on that retrograde yesterday on Saturday get to the site, get registered, be here in person or be there online, be here. There's even pieces you can come to for free. So get to the website and get registered. This is the moment. This is the time. This is, we are healing the heart of humanity. And this is why today's show is about freeing your heart to ascend. The only way we can heal the heart of humanity is, is kind of Einsteinian, <laughs> right? Is <laughs> It's recognizing that we need to go beyond our perceptions, that yes. we must lift our consciousness to solve what's happening. And I love how right here at the very beginning, Shri, they, they just call us right on it and say, look, if you want to wear these Essena shoes, if you really want to make a difference, then you need to remember that you need to let go of seeking to be attached, of being attached to this life, of being attached to outcomes, of being attached to everything. And that does not mean not taking action. And I think that's the misunderstanding that we need to talk about because so many misunderstand releasing attachment with inaction. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let's let's just get grounded here in, in some similar languaging. Yes, please. First, the Essena are sharing with us that you, as a divine being, already have all that is required for your peace, love, and joy. All that is required for your service in your energy field. Right here. In the divine legacy yep. that you are. However, when we are seeking outcomes in the world, when we are attached to how things look and how things are, what we're saying is, I'm not going to listen to that divine galactic library that is part of my legacy. Instead, I'm going to focus on the limitations within density and seek to play with them. Ooh, I'm loving this. And so the law of attraction uh, and, and focusing on things and writing your sentences. and, and Well, you know, I ha let's <laughs> just say it again because I love the way. Let's talk about that because this is something we've been talking about a lot. Mm -hmm. is that remember that the law of attraction are the training wheels. The law of attraction teaches you that you're not a victim. And that is the gift of the law of attraction. Yeah, that, that you, you can have command, some power. Right? Yeah. You can have some power. Yeah. However, I, let me, let's just say this because I love what it shares here. How much energy do you spend reading on how to attract, learning how to attract, out focusing on how to attract, paying attention to how you should attract, writing little sentences about how you should attract, talking to others about attracting and repeating your sentences. And here's what's so important. When that energy is freed, that energy, the very energy that you're addicted to that you think is making your life better and you wonder why it's not, when that energy is freed from your energy field, all there is is the divine perfection of the abundant being of you. You become that which you have been trying to call forward. Rather than fixating, fixating on how to attract it, you are it. And, and I love how they say it here. 
That is the heart of SE Not. Yes. It's the activator, which is what they are here to share. And I love this line, the heart of SE Not carries with it no attachment. The heart of SE Not has no need for attraction because the heart of SE Not beats in perfect harmony with the universe. Yes, beautiful. Perfect harmony with the universe, which means what? There's no fear. There's no doubt. There's just you re in this continual flow of divine inspiration creating. And that's where that activity comes in that yes. many misunderstand as, as inactivity. So it, it, sometimes it's important to go slowly on this because people mm -hmm. are in the habit of viewing things through traditional words. Mm -hmm. Remember, words are lenses. They, right? uh, words have a connotation, me a meaning. And when we use words in that fashion, we're limiting our sense of reality, our sense of what is, to conform to the words. Ooh, saying, let's breathe that in. I'm only going to allow into me, into my consciousness, that yeah. which conforms to my vocabulary. And, and therein is a limitation, is it not? The heart of the Essena, what is being shared here is that you are a divine being connected to yeah. and part of all that is. Breathe that in. You are a divine being part of and connected to all. All that is. Really take that in in the magnitude of what Sri just shared with you. It is big. Yeah. And it's way bigger than that personality that you have been carrying. Which that, is why the personality freaks out, right? This is why that yeah. egoic shell g gets all overwhelmed and has arguments. <laughs> <laughs> because With itself. The ego's job is to uh, pump itself up to say, I got this. I got life. I can figure anything out. I can do whatever. I can survive. And so the ego has a lot of this self-importance kind of energy saying, I got it. Yeah. I got this. Yeah. Now, when we expand to the infinite cosmos as our playground, the ego is whelmed. Okay, it's just that simple and, and understandable. So how do you compensate for that feeling of whelm? By allowing in the trust of the divine. When we trust our divine nature, when we trust spirit as expressing here, mm -hmm. then we are saying, I have no need to improve upon the divine hand. What I do have a need to do is align with the divine hand to, to be part of that versus thinking that my independence is so important that I, I have to control it, manage it, and chop it up into little bits and play with them. <laughs> now breathe that one in too, right? And so let let's go back to what they're sharing here, and and, I, and it brings it, it begs so many other really important questions because why is this so important for ascension, right? Why is releasing this type of atta uh, 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 of attachment so important for ascension? And what I think is really important is about understanding the heart aspect. Remember, this is about freeing your heart and ascending and. Here's something that is really important. When you walk in divine wholeness, yes. stop right there. Yes. That, before you would go any further, what does it mean to walk in divine wholeness? What it means is that you are whole, you, in tarot, right? It is you. You are, are, you are not needing or wanting. It doesn't mean that you don't have a desire for a partner or partnership or all of that. What it's meaning is that you are clear and in divine wholeness and walking in it. Walking in it means you are the living embodiment, the presence. So when you walk in divine wholeness without needing to attach, and this is where you, you ever get really, really close and you're like, well, how come I know all this, but I'm still not this? Mm. Or how come I'm repeating this cycle and this is happening again? It's the need to attach. So think about that, because not only is there the need to attach without needing to call forth attachment, or excuse me, attraction. What that means, without needing to call forth attraction, what that is saying to you is that you are the instantaneous manifestation of your divine, abundant, mastery nature. The law of instantaneous manifestation is the you that is wielding it. 
You know, what image that comes to me as we're, as we're sharing this is when you go on a road trip with a child, don't, uh -oh. <laughs> don't you bring a few toys? Yes! You bring some things along to capture the attention of, of the child. Sure. Well, consider this lifetime as what's here as little toys to capture your attention. As long as you're in the childlike aspect of your identity, meaning you haven't yet grown up to the truer, deeper identity that you are a spiritual being, in fact, a spiritual master who has taken birth here. Yeah. When we grow into or evolve or lift into that deeper truth, we don't need the toys anymore. We are at peace with our existence. We're at peace with the universe and love will inform us of appropriate actions mm -hmm. to take. So there's an interesting thing, you know, dynamic as people are, are evolving into their mastery. They say, well, what about setting goals? What about uh, things that I want to do or create or have happen in this, my life? So the first question I would ask you is, did the goal arise from your ascended heart? Mm -hmm. Or did the goal arise from the egoic self? That's a fundamental thing yeah. because when we really relax into the trust of our divine nature and from that space, we ask, you know, show me, show right. me uh, my service, show me my uh, ap appropriate action here. And we begin to get images or a felt sense of direction. We get guidance. Right. Well, then that quote goal is actually a flow toward a manifestation that is in full alignment with who you are. Yeah. It's not something separate from you. That's the very falsehood of goal setting. It's, I don't have it, I need to get it. That's right. goal setting versus I'm in flow with the toward the full manifestation of what I know to be true, what I know is coming into yeah. form. A little different orientation there. One has attachment, which is always based on the belief of lack. Yes. The other is I am in alignment with my divine heart and my flow and my nature. And yeah, my good brain says, okay, this is, this is coming forward. And it brings me joy to know it. <laughs> I'm in a joyful alignment with that which is meant to be, as opposed to feeling anxious about that which I think I'm supposed to get. Well, now, and that also, that's, that also is sharing a level of consciousness. Yes. Because this is so important. Let us not forget that we are having this conversation in 2021, in a year of linear time, where if you perceive that, the perception of linear time is going to become very challenging. And you're going to feel a sense of not being able to keep up and things are going to get really crazy. Mm -hmm. This is the blessing of this moment is to walk in your SNA shoes, to lift up out of the linear time, to ignite this concentric dimensionality. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I get it. Go to SriAndKara.com and right on the homepage, get your copy of the calendar. Yes. You know, learn about what's happening because the, it's the attachment to the structures that have been that are really coming up into the energy of the experience of the heart of humanity. And again, I just want to say, get to WWA Global and become a part of the summit. Be there in March. Join when these two hands come together, the eagle and the condor. Just mm. yesterday, Shri and I were with the Kanyari in their incredible world. I pray that you watched Shri and Kira live earlier today, this Sunday, uh, on the 31st of January, when we are showing the film from that. This is a moment that says, hey, and, and I want to read you more about this heart because it's, that's yeah. really what it is, right? Yes. And, and, and you know, Shri, maybe you want to share this because I, I'm just going to cue it off with this. I'll start where we picked up. The heart of Essena has no need for attraction because the heart of Essena beats in perfect harmony with the universe. You are the law of instantaneous manifestation. They continue. You are that heart, and yet you have chosen to be with great love and great presence and much patience. You have chosen to be, chosen to be in flesh form again on this planet. Yeah. Each being that is on this planet is here for one of only two experiences. Breathe that in. All right. Breathe that in. One of only two experiences. And here they are. The first experience is to be here as a volunteer to assist others to remember the gift of who they are. Those who truly do not need to be here now. Now, let's really breathe that in, 
All right, and here's the other one. And the other experience is those whose soul energy are here for completion now, to complete an energy. Oft times, energy that has come forward from an attachment to this very energy. Now, I want you to really hear that, right? Oftentimes, that which has come forward, meaning the reason that the completion lifetime is right now, the reason that there's that continual spiral of coming back, because let's step back a minute, because we're talking about you free the heart and ascend, right? When we wake up, however that's defined for you, that sense of the greater sense of being, the knowing that there, there is more than this, the knowing that the self-limitations have kept us our thoughts limited and thereby kept our consciousness limited. So when we're able to break free of that, and we call that witnessing the witnesser, we are able to then, in that moment, give ourselves the opportunity to honestly be the, the first experience, which is the volunteer. However, that other experience, the one I want to read it again, those whose soul's energy are here for completion now, they have to complete an energy, oftentimes came forward from an attachment to this. Well, what is the this? This is where it gets really important. In this moment, right now, we are collectively at a moment of consciousness evolution we have not collectively ever had before. We have been in this Groundhog Day a lot. We have. Yeah. And this yeah. is the one where enough of us are remembering it. It's like, okay, remember, we're going to do this again. Will you remember? Will you remember? Am I going to have to wake you up again? Okay, we're at that moment right now where enough of us do remember. We're like, hey, we've only got like, you know, okay, we got 30 minutes to get this done or we're going to have to do it again kind of thing. That's exactly where we're at. And that's why you're still here. We are. I know I was, Shreen and I giggle, we're on like our fourth marriage together, right? In the 19 years we've been together. But what's happening is, and I want you all to breathe this in. In this very moment right now, you have collective memory, both personally, historically, and in any other way of the parallel lifetimes that we time surf through to be in this lifetime now. And if you are just meeting us now, then it's because we're in this parallel. If you have known Sri and I for many, many years, then you have been traveling those timelines with us. We are here by choice. We are all time travelers. The question is, are we aware of it or not? And this is that key to breaking that attachment. We are here right now. We are in form. You are in form. And many, many, many of us in some of these other timelines where we had already met, we're not in form anymore. Those timelines are completing <clears throat> differently. But we collectively said we're going to be here right now. We're going to be the volunteers that will be here right now because this is that important. This is that moment of moments. Yeah. That's what's going on. And the attachment to the belief systems is what keeps you spinning laterally even though you're awake. And so if, what's, what's the very first thing that ignites our upward spiral? It's our awareness. But in order to keep it going up, then it's the conscious awareness, that it's the conscious experience and the conscious choice. Yeah. And so this is why this moment, these two energies are so important. They are the crucible of breaking open your own heart of mastery, of saying yes. And, and Shri, let's finish the rest of this sentence, because, the rest of this little page here, because wow, is it important. Yeah, because, you know, I, I'm i just, as I revisit this again, right? right here live with each of you, I, I want to I br bring us right back. The first experience, you know, there's, there's two experiences. The two, right? There's two experiences that every being that is in form here is participating with. The right? first one is, I'm here as a volunteer to assist others to remember the gift of who they are. Those who truly do not need to be here now. Meaning there are a lot of masters on the planet that are just hanging out. They don't really need to be here, but if they don't remember who they are, that power, that's how much power they wield, is being part of the imbalance generator. Yep. So that's a gift of service. Yep. Now, the other experience is those whose soul's energy are here for completion. To com now. To complete this. an energy. But, but look at this. 
those beings, as they come into completion, then are freed to join the first group to be in service Do you see to, the, the to assist others to remember who they are. It's all one. It is all one. One and this plus is what one always equals about. one, right? And so when we, you know, many people, uh, beings took birth here because of a prior lifetime where they felt incomplete, I, I can do better, you know, I, or I, I, I want to balance the scales. Dying with a lot of grief. Mm. Die, if you transition, and, and I want to, can I back up for one second, yeah. too, because what you're sharing here is really important. One of, oh, I'm liking this, comp- I yeah. like this, this is better. One of Archangel Zodkill's primaries primaries is keep your eyes on the divine at all times because when we keep our eyes on the divine at all times then everything everything has its divine experience unfolding and we adopt the habit of that when we transition in fear when we transition in confusion when we transition in great anger and injustice those energies trap us in the energy of that this is where a lot of that fourth dimensional astral interference comes from is a lot of beings that are just really trapped this is why it's important to be able to have that ascended presence move you through and up into the the fifth loving yourself enough and so i wanted to talk about that tree because of what you just shared it is really important this is why keeping our eyes on the divine frees your heart ignites those essena sandals and ascends your presence while in a body of form it is possible we are living proof of it so are the other people that are living here at tosa blue mountain we're watching people reverse age every day healthier every day this is our moment this yeah. is your moment and and shri i just want to go back here because when you seek you are attached yes we say that again when you seek you are attached if you are a seeker you believe there is something missing and so if you are seeking then we invite you to remember that whatever you wish to find is always available for you how do you wish to embrace it because it is always in front of you and it never left you Mm -hmm. because it is you it's that loving yourself enough to lift up into that fifth dimensional presence to hold that energy to begin the releasing of the judgment to lift up into that seventh dimensional experience as well when beyond yeah absolutely and these practices these invitations to lift to become conscious that we're conscious etc that these are the essential uh, orientations of ascended consciousness yeah. that we are seeking to remind you that you are that and you can do that and you can f- uh, benefit from your commitment to be that which All you truly that. are. Exactly. And, and, as, and as we remember this, we liberate ourselves mm-hmm. from the shackles of separation, which mm-hmm. invite karmic uh, activity. Mm -hmm. So therein is another little paradox that as you wake up, we forgive and release all that came before, thus all karma is released. All need to take another birth is released. And there is only one joy left to serve. Now let's breathe that in, right? Let's really breathe that in because that, you know, C number one, right? (laughs) Brings us back to one of the two reasons we are here. And this is why so many of us go, but how do I do that? I want to do more. So I want to go back and and remind you, 2021. 2021 right now is a year that is so intense and so big and so incredibly rich that all we are doing is, is we are just, growing 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 and this is why starting right now this month in february we are all masters we are all healers we what we need to do is remember shri and i have been called by the archangelic realms and all of the ascended master presences live from the healing chamber here at tosa blue mountain we are going to be offering the avesa energy healing balancing protocol Please join us. Yes. And and if your heart is saying, you know what, I get it. I'm igniting that Taurus field. I'm I'm ready to do more with my life. Really go to Shriankara.com and and go beyond just joining us in February. But get there in February. You are going to not only learn the protocol, you can get certified in the protocol. If you already know the protocol, you want to be there because it's going to be up leveling. There's going to be a lot of new implementations and energy attunements we're going to be offering to you. And in addition to that, you become if you want to learn how to teach it 
Give it to others. Open up a practice. The, you, everything you need to support your expansion is in front of you right now. What do you do? You love what you do every day. Maybe it's time to do what you do every day, knowing that what you love and what you're expanding into is your weekends or your days off or helping your family navigate a challenging moment. We are at a moment on the planet where we need to stop seeking others to solve things. We are the ones that we have waited for. Mm -hmm. We are the healers. We are the teachers. We are the masters. You want to know that you are inoculated from COVID? Raise your consciousness. Lift your conscious awareness beyond your need to prove. And, and here's a little, a little secret. All right? I'm, I'm, if you're watching us on video, I'm kind of poking you. Here's a little secret. <clears throat> The ones that have the biggest voice have the biggest opinions. And what that means is that if you are, if someone is putting themselves as very, very ascended and filled with incredible knowledge, but they're really needing to prove a specific point. And I'm bringing this up in the spiritual uh, arena because Sri and I refer to it as the spiritualized ego. Everyone has to move through it. It's that spiritual activism phase of the pyramid of spiritual awakening. The spiritualized ego right now is at an all-time high, which is flabbergasting. I honestly could not believe it could have ever gotten higher than it was when we first started. <laughs> but of course it had to. I don't know why we'd be surprised, right? However, it's polarizing into issues that matter, meaning not that it ever didn't matter. It's, it's moving into the consciousness arguments. It's trying to hit you at a level that is pinging at a depth and moving through all of the bodies, third dimension, fourth dimension, fifth dimensions, all of them, moving through the emotional body, the physical body, the spiritual body, the etheric body, all at the same time. This is why you need to jump out and understand concentric dimensionality. Otherwise, the spiritualized ego is getting ready to have a heyday. And the, 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 the poke is that if you're reading someone that's got to heavily justify everything they're doing, that is a third dimensional argument. Yeah. Vaccination, how COVID originated, conspiracy theories of any type. That is not higher consciousness. That is spiritualized ego that is actually being used by the lower state of consciousness to get as many beings as possible. And this is why... Ave Sa is so important. This is why the yoga of self-ascension is so important because it's as unique as you are. What we are is a community that's here recognizing that each, each individual will, each individual will is here carrying out exactly what they need to carry out. And what does not exist is that cohesive group of masters of all of us coming together and saying, hey, wait a minute, together we are better. Yeah. Instead of trying to justify everything, Competition is the single greatest illusion on the planet. Can you let go of your addiction to believing that it's there? When we, you know, I love, and I've had people yell at me and tell me I'm misquoting him, and it's like, I don't care because he and I have a relationship, and I love him with all my heart, and I know our, our relationship is solid, our partnership, and that would be Paramahansa Yogananda. Yogananda was very clear that when you compare, you kill. You kill you. Because when you compare yourself and say, I'm not good enough, look at them, look at that, look at mm -hmm. there, that's done already, you kill the inspiration that was starting to come through you. When you are inspired, when you are feeling wonderful, that's when your heart is free and that's when you are ascending. Because it's the divine inspiration that's the law of instantaneous manifestation. You're not saying I need, you're saying I am. And that's the moment at hand. Uh, well, and that's the key to the moment at hand, to anchor in the I am and to simply yes. smile at the density brain, which says, I don't understand this. <laughs> Nor do I want to. Okay. And, and I can only understand it if you limit it and shrink it down and make it, uh, give me some baby talk, you know, relatively speaking, because to talk with the language of the divine is wordless. To talk with the language of density is chock full of words. Oh, yeah. And every one of them carries you out on tangents. 
And so that's the fun, is it not? That's the fun of evolution, is to become more uh, embraced by the wordless, the mystical state of communion, Mm. and then to use your words to communicate with those who require those words in order to have a connection with you. That's what they're, they're a tool, not a definition. But when we define ourselves by our thoughts, we're using words, which are limited concepts, to truncate an, uh, reality, to truncate the magnificence of who you are. Now, I don't want to go too far downstream here other than to suggest what to you... What a great stream, Shree. <laughs> <laughs> to suggest to you that on the one hand, your brain is your servant yeah. and can be employed toward the greater good. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, if we define ourselves by the contents of our brain, we've said it's my master and it knows more than the divine. Right? And and consider the absurdity of that. The, exactly. The, the hubris of that. Yet the proclaimed authorities out there are sitting in that trap for a spell. Yep. They'll break out of it at some point. However, It's important for each of us to bring a hand to our heart frequently, to connect to the ascended heart, which is beyond the emotional heart of the egoic reality. The ascended heart is anchored in peace. The emotional heart is anchored in need fulfillment. Now, both are real. Both are an experience. However, one is aligned with your mastery and the other is aligned with your personality. Breathe that in. Which is that limited density ego. Yeah. So usually we kind of walk through one to get to the other, but you can have them both. When we reside in our mastery, we haven't said none of that exists. We've put it in a healthy relationship. It's a tool. Lifted consciousness, right? I, I am. <clears throat> Pause. I am. I am light. I am love. I am peace. I am an ascended master in a, in a limited experience called Earth School. And I am loving all creation through my experiences here. Wow. You know, all I'm hearing is the mantra of self ascension, right? Get a pencil. Write this down. I am here. I am here. I am ready. I am ready. I am open. I am open. Guide me. Guide me. Non-dogmatic, absolutely clear, as individual as you are, and the ignition of the yoga of self-ascension. That simple mantra will take you where you want to go. It will absolutely free your heart. It ignites that ascended presence. It keeps you on that journey. The key is to always offer yourself at the end of the day, keeping your eyes on the divine at all times. And the mantra of self-ascension helps to do that. Yes. The, the other thing I want to share is that you notice that we are as you are. I am as you are. This April, another reason to go to sriankira.com and spend some time there. There's a lot going on at the website right now. All yours to take advantage of. Go be there. But make sure you jump in and register for April. In April, we are going to be igniting the grid of illumination around the world. And for the first time ever, Shri and I will be teaching from this, I, I don't have it here, oh yes I do, from the I Am Discourses book that manifested, that you could read about on YouTube, you can watch a little video on YouTube that talks about this book literally manifested with us over how many years ago now? Oh, I don't know, yeah. 15, 16 years ago. Yes, yes. And what we didn't realize is that it was really a teacher's manual and that we are at a moment where the grid of illumination is being put together and there it is that's that's the cover of ours so not only do you want to register go find an old copy of the book go to amazon go to ebay go to old booksellers ours is an original get the original 1930s versions if you can or the oldest one you can find and get the hard copy you connect with it bring it in because we are igniting in april right after the profound ignition of the equinox of the wwa global summit we are going right into april and we are putting together the grid of illumination 
and all around the world, we are going to reclaim these hard copy, ancient, beautiful wisdom texts that are coded so heavily. And we are going to unlock it and we are going to build this grid of illumination. And it's the way we can tangibly be with each other. Find your copy. Get a hard copy of this incredible book. Join us in April. Join us in February. Be a part of Avesa and join us for the year. Why not yeah. just do it all and say yes? It is, at the end of the day, our steadfast commitment, our focused awareness, and our complete trust that calls us into the conscious awareness and the conscious experience and the conscious choice that keeps the spiral of our ascended presence not only igniting, but holds us in that multidimensional space through this concentric dimensionality to be, literally be the law of instantaneous manifestation. And that cannot be achieved if you are attached to the paradigm of this realm. And herein is one of the fun paradoxes. As we relax our investment in the beliefs in yeah. scarcity and competition and fear and all of that, as we, we just relax it. We're not saying... Reverend Ike it. You know, it, it will release naturally if you give your consciousness the alternative. Right? Meaning, I choose to keep my eyes on the divine. I choose to see beauty in our world. I choose to trust my guidance and my ascended heart to show me the way. I choose to remember. I choose to remember. There is nothing to fear. And as we stop seeking and start allowing... Yeah. There may be a momentary uh, void that we pass through because we're letting go of the priority How exciting. of density of ego. Wow, day. new life. And that void is a signal that you're there. You're moving into the divine flow. Yes, you are. But, however. <laughs> there it is. However, this journey takes commitment. Mm -hmm. We have to be willing yeah, we really to do. move through the habit of the habit of the pain. Of the pain. Of the pain. Archangel Zodkill, 101, Sacred and, Union, Journey and, and, Home. And that habit of the habit is right. the habit of believing in separation, the habit of believing in efforting, the habit of believing in pain and lack. The habit of believing you're what you think you are. Yeah, all of the, quote, approved belief systems oh, of density. Are. Pick from this approved menu. Approved list. Right. Okay, those are there to help train you to make a better discernment, to, to help train you to choose exactly. with an informed heart and consciousness. That's all they're there for is to cultivate you. They're not there to entrap you. No. Unless you say, I choose a journey of entrapment, so I'm going to hang out in limitation this lifetime. That's what the attachment does. Remember that when we let go of the attachment, it doesn't mean that we're letting go. We actually become a more active co-creator because we've let go to the attachments of what we think we should be, and we've ignited our freedom to be who we are. Yeah. That is the moment we are in. And this is why Kira and I have made a commitment to be of ever greater service, meaning to be yeah. available to help re you remember who you are, to offer these various uh, gatherings and teachings so that we, as a collective group of masters on this planet, can embrace the deeper truth of yeah. our mentoring, our mastery, our teachership, our healership, yeah. that we can dance together in the joy of that energy while still having a body, while still going to the market and, and cheering up the, the, the teller and the, and the cashier as we gather what is needed for our worldly life and be in joy and in service rather than participating in the, quote, alternative ways of being. There's ascended sanity, there's density sanity, and you are awake, so you get it. Yeah. So go to shriankira.com. Get in there for Avesa. Make sure you're with us in April. Just, just register for one of the mastery journeys because then you're already in the Monday magic. And know that in this moment, your voice matters. It does. Your mastery matters. Your heart is saying yes. All you need to do is say yes along with it. We love you with all our heart and soul. We hope to see you tomorrow night at Monday magic. And of course, Tuesday night at Soul Mirrors, 5 p.m. Pacific time. We love you. Thank you for joining us at Shri and Kira Live. To have your questions answered, send us an email to guest at shriandkiraradio.com and check out more information at shriandkira.com. See you next week. Namaste.